Um, sorry for the delay. Uh, so let's go the, let's get it started. Um, so um, in this session, we're going to talk about multi-tenancy support uh, with uh, RBAC and namespace. Uh, my name is Michael, and uh, this is Fred, and uh, we're working on a team to bring um, Kubernetes cluster to a vSphere environment. So, and uh, we also have a team working on upstream in terms of various areas, in terms of uh, clustering, scheduling, and the various areas. Okay, um, so what we're going to cover in this session is we're going to talk about the basic namespace, how can namespace offer isolations between different users, and then how can you use RBAC to enforce policies and permissions uh, to provide additional controls uh, for those users. And then uh, we're going to talk about how do you put namespace and RBAC together uh, so to offer multi-tenancy to the users uh, with some level of control. Um, I, we certainly understand that there is a way to, uh, for user to create multiple clusters to offer that kind of lev level of isolation, but uh, you're going to essentially spending a lot of resource, uh, you're going to have a lot of cluster to manage, and that's not ideal uh, for most of the environment. Therefore, we're talking, we're ta when we talk about multi-tenancy here, we're really talking about multi-tenancy within, within a single cluster. And the Fred is going to follow up with that demo. Okay, so this is a pretty general environment. You have an IS under the cover. Uh, can be AWS, can be a vSphere, can be a Google Clouds. Um, so, and then you put uh, Kubernetes uh, environment on top, and your application is running on top. And the identity management, for the most part, is an external component of it, and then you use a different ways to hook up your identity management to it. And uh, it would be ideal that your IAS uh, hook up, your user from your IAS can be translated into the Kubernetes layer, uh, and uh, that we believe uh, have multiple ways you can in, um, integrate them together. Uh, it's possible. Okay. Uh, we uh, create a couple of personas for our use case. Uh, so for most of you guys, if you uh, start working on Kubernetes a year ago, uh, your task is a lot of things you need to do as an application developer. So you not only need to worry about your, how do you uh, write your application, you also need to worry about how to monitoring, uh, scale your cluster, you also have to worry about how to create your cluster and it does a lot of cluster management. Uh, as um, time goes on, we believe there's additional persona uh, going to be created um, in the future, um, or it's already starting form. And uh, so um, basically, um, we we're thinking about there can be a DevOps admin person who can help you to help the developers to kind of scale up, uh, scale down the cluster, and kind of monitoring the cluster. And uh, this person can be very much on the same application team, um, but just have a, a little bit speci uh, additional special task. Um, but the most important part, uh, we think, uh, is going to be um, the cluster creation, the cluster management uh, is going to be uh, outsourced uh, to a, a cloud admin, right? Uh, a specialized cloud admin to help you uh, create the cluster, but also does a lot of user level management. Uh, and uh, uh, I think if you go to some of the sessions, uh, one of the sessions we're talking about is how do you increase your t uh, team's efficiency um, if your application team try to develop um, uh, applications. Uh, one of the uh, best practice is essentially outsource your cluster, your user management uh, to, an administrator, uh, to an administrator team to help you to manage that. Um, so that's what we're talking about here. And uh, Fred is going to talk about the remaining. Right. Okay. Uh, thanks, uh, Michael, for the introduction. The problem, right? So I'm an engineer. I'm trying to solve that problem, of course. Uh, so um, before actually I can go to uh, uh, two two actually topics I'm actually cover. One's actually you know what 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 like I'll, I'll definitely I'm using Outback and Namespace to solve the uh, multi tenancy problem. And also, actually, I would talk about you know the models we support, and you know some model actually we will support in the future. Um, so let's talk about the Kubernetes namespace and Outback. Uh, how many actually actively using Kubernetes right now? 
wow, there's a lot of people good. <laughs> I probably fight through it because um, uh, different audiences, I, I need to introduce some terminology. Um, so basically, I'm just actually introducing some terminology here. Um, I don't have to go through these slides. You probably know what uh, Kubernetes, just an open source platform designed to automate deploying, scaling, and operating application containers. I put the link there. If you're not familiar, just go to the link and, and, and look it up. Uh, I think you will be excited to read that. Uh, the next thing is actually uh, the reason I have to uh, just roughly go through the concept because um, that's actually how I use the uh, uh, Outback namespace actually to you know, support the multi-tenancy. So uh, in the uh, Kubernetes terminology, a node is just like either a physical machine or just a work, well, virtual machines, right? And namespace is, you know, is a virtual cluster, actually provides isolations of resources. Um, we need namespaces because Yes, um, we, basically that's how we can do the uh, multi-tenancy. One tenant actually cannot see the other uh, tenant's um, uh, resources. Port uh, unit of deployment, a single instance of application in Kubernetes, one or more containers, right? And uh, surface is basically the abstraction, how you ex actually expose your surfaces to the outside, right? And of course, Outback is the root-based uh, SS control you know, we are using uh, to do the enforcement, right? Okay? Um, so I'm just actually quickly going through that. Um, so that's the way actually I look at it, right? Kubernetes actually is kind of like cow platform neutral. So um, it doesn't actually really dictate a particular security model. Uh, that's good and bad, I mean, but, but that's actually well, what it is, at, at least for now. Uh, the, there's two categories of users, right? So it's actually, there's a service account users. Um, so um, managed by Kubernetes cells, you actually go through Kubernetes created users. And then also um, there's normal user actually managed by outside. Managed by outside means actually it's like, okay, you may actually have a database somewhere or you may actually have IDM or you may have, you know, you know LDAP, whatever, right? Uh, so the, the, the user is, is managed by outside. That's, that's what I mean. Um, a uh, nice thing about that is actually uh, uh, Kubernetes actually allow you to extend the authentic authentication plugin and then authorization plugin. So actually you can um, basically connect that to you know, outside sources to do the author authorization and authentication. Okay. Um, so inside the toolbox, right? So what I can use to do my job, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's take a look at the namespace. Uh, uh, basically, this sh slide just showed that you know how the uh, isolation can happen, right? So um, in Kubernetes, actually, you will, you will always create the default namespace for you. In this case, I, I simplify it, right? There's more different type of resources actually in the namespace. I only actually talk about the port and and services here because just you know simplify. Typically, application actually you need to a container to run your well, a port to run your container or your application, right? And then you use services to export it. That, that's one way services, right? So I'm just showing there like that three namespaces. Actually, the the port actually is different namespaces, so it's isolated. You know, um, basically the the one port. We uh, if you within a namespace, you cannot see the uh, the port in the other namespace. Okay, so that's the foundation. You know, the isolation I did to uh, provide the user the multi tenancy. Okay. So for our bag, uh, just again touch about the concept again. Um, so, so basically, uh, the the outback, the way it's set up is actually uh, they're based on rules, right? And then um, there's two types of uh, row. Uh, they they use the object called row. Like there's a cluster row and row. And I'm actually going to give exam some example uh, uh, later, right? And then I'm um, to granting a permission. Actually, the way it works, the outback in Kubernetes is actually you do a, either cluster row binding or row binding. Right? Uh, row binding is actually for a particular namespace, and then you know cluster row binding is actually for cluster Y and or namespaces. Sorry, um, yes. It's a separate thing. This is actually Kubernetes. What could Kubernetes provide? Okay, so yeah. Uh, of course, I have talked about subject. Basically, you know, when you uh, grant a permission, you grant to a subject. The subject actually can be a user, a group, and a service account, right? Okay. 
So I'm just actually quickly go through the the you know the the things I actually I can define right. In, if a cluster row, uh, of course, is you familiar with the Kubernetes? Uh, basically, I just do a a dump uh, using um, uh, the output right, uh, d dumping the the object itself. So the um, so they have a kind. Basically, it's, it's the cluster row, and then API version. Yeah, you know what API version I guess support, uh, using that to re uh, talk to the the Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes to to retrieve law, uh, objects. Uh, metadata uh, you need to specify a name. So this is actually note reader. And if you read the rules uh, below, actually it will, you, it will make more sense, right? It actually don't don't uh, limit it to any API groups. Uh, the resources actually we are interested to to define uh, to specify is just the notes, right? And then basically action you can do is either get, watch, and list. So that's why it's a note reader. So actually that's how you control the, you know, what you know, a particular subject can do. Um, so then actually we go to the row. Uh, the only thing is actually make the differences is actually uh, the row actually will ask you to specify a namespace as well. Uh, in here I'm just saying that using default. And then you look at the rules, it's very similar. I, I don't specify particular AI groups, API groups, right? But the resource in, in uh, the process actually inside the, um, um, the namespace, right? So actually I say, well, okay, inside that default namespace, uh, you, can re you, you can do these verbs like get, watch, list on the pods. So basically, again, that's why it's called pod reader row in this case, right? Uh, so the next thing is actually I have is cluster row binding, right? So uh, remember I said that you know in order to grant permission, actually using row binding to doing that. Uh, in this case, right, if you go to the uh, the like the first thing I, again is the type, typical, right? I mean all the objects has this type. API version, let's, let's forget that. The name is actually where you specify the row binding name, and then um, you now actually refer to the subject subject. Right now, it's the Kai's group. I'm actually saying that all manager group can do the following, right? So what the following can do is the rule reference saying that, hey, the Kai is custom row, and then you know that's the one I specified, you know, in previously the note reader. So basically, all the group manager can uh, read the read the notes. Okay, so let me quickly go to the row binding as well. Um, uh, Again, so uh, this time actually I basically grant a user called James, right? If you go 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 down to the subject, and now of course uh, I missed something. It's actually because this this row binding is actually is particular namespace, so I'm actually specify namespace default, and then you know the user actually is James. Actually, he can uh, read the read the ports. So uh, that's actually the outback. You know, give me the kind of the, the granular control, like who can do what, right? So uh, that's pretty much actually uh, what we build on top of it. Okay. Yes. Yes. I have a problem uh, when we connected to LDAP and we have issues. Um, so <laughs> the Authentication actually works, um, but when it's coming back, it's actually is, um, is a lower case. So we ask the customer to basically say that, sorry, you have to, you know, when you specify the, uh, going through our interface, you have to specify the user in lower case. Th th that's a temporary get around right now. We will address that uh, probably later. Yeah. Hmm? You can add all the user, and you can also group them, right? So, so we support like you know group user and surface account. So we actually, you can like like for example, the example, the PV example, the group is the manager, is not a single person, right? Okay. So the other way you can do it is you can also link you to your backend LDAP, right? So if you link to and to your backend LDAP, all the users are automatically pulled in. Right. Yeah, if you guys don't mind, I'm just like uh, do a time check. I probably will defer the question at the end, or you know. Uh, but let me finish the uh, presentation. Um, 
So uh, I quickly go through like the the flow, right? I mean, probably curious actually how you know the the flow works. So when a request coming, if you look at from the left hand side, right? When a request coming to the um, uh, Kubernetes API server, right? So actually, it first actually saying that hey, you know, make sure that user is a valid user, right? So actually, it go to a, a KX authentication plugin. Um, you can specify your own plugin, right? So uh, let's make sure that the user is authenticated is actually what we know that who he, who he is, right? And then um, the next thing is actually based on the, op uh, so actually you're based on the operation, you will ask the, um, oh, sorry, actually I, 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 I skipped too fast. I'm actually, uh, the authentication in this case actually go to the IDM, right? So it doesn't have to be like a local database file, right? So actually can go, go to IDM and then, you know, saying that, okay, good, you know, this is, this user is authenticated, right? The next thing is actually based on the operation, right? You will actually defer to the uh, KX uh, outback of the of authorization plugin, right? So um, you will actually make sure that, okay, that person, right, um, can be uh, authorized to do that per, uh, operation. And after that, so you can uh, process the request and return the result. So, so I'm not sure it's pretty, you know, generic, you know, basically what Kubernetes does, but it does help me to, um, able to uh, create a um, um, multi-density environment in, in our case. Okay. Uh, so I'm talking about the user security model uh, we support and we might support in the futures. Uh, but I've, I've got, again, this, a lot of time the user model really depends on your organization, right? I mean, actually, <laughs> so, uh, but this is actually uh, we support so far, okay? So uh, just quickly refresh the screen. I'm not going to go through it because Michael actually gave a very good description already. So uh, developer, DevOps is actually in the application development team. So basically they are developer in a sense, right? And then the cloud mean is kind of like two roles, but uh, we actually have customers really want to actually have uh, some, basically mean want to delegate some fun, uh, uh, privilege to the uh, uh, a particular developer, so actually like Michael mentioned, you know, you can scale up or scale down uh, the, the, the cluster or do a bit more like, you know, things, look in the log, things like that. Okay, so uh, this is the, 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 the first model. Um, uh, we call it exclusive cluster. <laughs> uh, let me explain using the way I interpret it, okay? The exclusive cluster here means is actually, I have a cluster, <laughs> it's exclusive use by a group of users. So that's exclusive mean. So, okay, uh, so in this case, it's like, um, uh, it's the simplest model. It's pretty much like, you know, when you first time, you know, uh, uh, create your, your cluster, right? You just let your, you know, uh, uh, coworker to use it, right? It's a single tenancy, right? Um, uh, what I did here also is actually basically collapse the roles of DevOps and mean and developer. So, no such a thing is actually, they, they just all develop it. And the cloud admin has full control, right? Have user access, have cluster uh, resources. Uh, any authorization user can create a namespace and, and just like you, probably you, when you first time create the, the Kubernetes cluster, right? And all namespaces are resources visible to all uh, authorized users. Means actually if that's, you know, you allow your your coworker to use your cluster, basically it would, he can, or she, he or she can delete your namespace as well. Cluster, uh, cluster resource is invisible to all, all the users. So in this case, again, it's only the, the, um, uh, the admin actually can do it. So uh, this is a bit more uh, supporting the, basically depth of the mean, you know, um, uh, model, right? So uh, the, the uh, light blue colors is the things actually got changed from the exclusive cluster itself. So uh, you actually have the two distinct roles now. We preserve that, right? And the cloud, the cloud admin actually then dedicate some controls to the DevOps, right? And then um, basically DevOps can do some admin's job like, you know, in the cluster level resources, right? And the last thing is actually the cluster resources are the the, the color change, the, 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 the change ones, is the resource are not visible to all the authorized developers. It's the same, actually, developers still actually bound by that uh, same rule. 
Um, so let's go to the share cluster and then we will do the demo. Hopefully it's more interesting. Uh, the, the share cluster, right? So share cluster, the idea is actually really the support the multi-tenancy within a cluster, okay? Um, so uh, the, the way it, it, you, you do is, again, this model is simplified model. We collapse the DevOps mean and the developer, right? And then um, basically, again, it's kind of means at full control. So if you look at the right diagram, uh, the, 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 the pictures on the right, right? So what it does is actually we assign uh, the user within the namespace. So we use the namespace to isolate, you know, what they can do, right? Uh, what resource actually they can see. So um, that's actually the, the model is, and also of course is they are just developer. They cannot, you know, see the uh, cluster resource uh, as user. Uh, so let's do the. Uh, actually. Oh, okay. uh, um, so the picture might be a little bit confusing. Okay. What I mean, what we mean by each column is it's a different set of uh, development teams uh, yes, that they can you. use different set of namespace, but they uh, cannot see each other's namespace. So that's a difference. So it's not the same two developer go to different namespace. Yeah, so it's, it's a persona. It's, it's not sorry, like it's, it's not the user. Uh, well, they, they can, but you know, it depends on your treat as more like persona then. A role. Okay, uh, so the next one is actually again is you know give the dis distinguished no role again. Uh, so it's not much different from you know um, uh, the, well, I mean, is it, the dif the main differences is actually against the um, the the uh, default means actually has a bit more privilege to deal with the cluster level uh, stuff. Right, uh, look at the dashboard, look at the log. Right, I mean uh, scale scale up down the the cluster. Okay, so let's do the demo. So 5.10, right, we, we are, okay, so we have 10 minutes so to do the demo, okay. Sorry, I a bit rushed, but um, just wanted, uh, we can do the demo. Hopeful, okay, still, still up, <laughs> that's nice. So, uh, oops, sorry, okay. Oh, the screens, okay, it's pretty interesting. Uh, so let me bring up the, okay. So uh, this is our product implement uh, the, the two cluster roles. Okay. Oh. Oh, you can't see. Oh, I can see, you cannot see. I, okay. Mm. New challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, my voice is probably too loud. Uh, Not sure how. Uh, can I? Oh, exit current location. Okay. Can you see? Oh, okay. Okay. okay, perfect, right. So uh, this is the product we create to support the, the exclusive cluster and then the share cluster without the variation. So the, the the basic model, right? Uh, I already created two clusters, but I just want to show you that, um, you know, when, you know, how do you create a cluster? Did ha did that's help to, you know, doing the demonstration. Uh, so let's pretend I'm actually creating one. I'm not gonna create one because it, it takes some time. Um, uh, because I have 10 minutes, I, less than 10 minutes now. Okay, so, um, let, oh, okay. So let me try to, uh, Pretend I'm creating an exclusive cluster, so actually I can, you know, uh, continue to do my demo. So, um, so first, actually, uh, I p uh, picked a provider, right? Um, provider in the sense is, you know, the uh, treat as the the I IAS we talk about. So it's a it's just an object, you know, presented there. Um, so I, I picked a provider IASS, right? And then I actually just quickly go through it. I can specify like the cluster name, right? Oh. So let, let's say I, I just call it exclusive cluster. So let's say I have three master nodes, uh, three worker nodes, and then um, that's by the DNS, so actually I can access outs, um, um, outside. So, and then you have a choice. Yeah, yeah, yes, oh, thank you. So uh, by default, actually it's exclusive cluster. So actually I picked the exclusive cluster in this case. So next thing is actually, 
as an administrator, so I, I would see you know a bunch of users. Right? So I can pick the user I would like to add, you know, allow to access the cluster. So in this case, actually, let's say I pick the uh, dev one, the user. Uh, I'm only, only allowing him to doing it, but for the dev two, I didn't actually uh, check it. So just next, right? And then you just click finish. You will try to create a cluster. Uh, so uh, so I'm not, I'm not going to create this. I actually just close this window. And then I already created an exclusive cluster for this. So actually just quickly go into there, uh, look at the user and group. So the user is already like what I you know, try to create, right? It's actually uh, the development one user is there. Okay, so uh, let's do uh, the demo. Uh, uh, I, I messed up the window a little bit, so I probably, uh, so this is the dev one. Uh, user, right? Uh, assume actually that one lock user uh, lock into that, right? So if we just do a, a group control, right? Uh, get namespace, right? Yeah, you you he can see all the namespaces. Well, by default, actually the Kubernetes network actually will create some uh, the default namespace and then some uh, system level namespace as well. Okay, so. Uh, the user can see all the namespace, and the user also can create a namespace. Right. Um, okay, so let's say I create the namespace dev. Right. So it's good, right? So the the user can 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 you know basically just like. A developer set up their own, you know, uh, uh, Kubernetes cluster. Actually, can create namespace, you know, do whatever, uh, basically uh, he or she wants, right? And then let me find the dev two user in this case. Uh, no, this dev four. Okay, this dev two. Um, so dev two user say, well, I want to actually assess your uh, Kubernetes cluster as well. So. <laughs> So let's actually doing that, right? So, so. when uh, Fred created the cluster, um, he only add dev one to the cluster. He right. never add dev two user to his cluster. Right. So that's why. Right. So it was it will actually coming back saying that. Uh, let me move the screen a bit center. Uh, basically, this there, there's no policy allow you doing that. So basically, that's you know to demonstrate how the. Um, uh, the exclusive cluster, you know, uh, can do, right? I mean, the user actually using the ex exclusive cluster. So um, just want to show that, um, actually, just show that we actually create the namespace successfully, right? Okay, so you can see the dev one is, is there, okay? So this is good, right? So, uh, uh, um, exclusive cluster, right? Uh, can use by a, a group of people, right? And and then they can actually create namespace ex uh, extra right? like that, right? And then let's go to the uh, the second model, is the shared namespace. So I'm actually going through the uh, just roughly going through the um, equation again. So the difference is actually very similar. Uh, I'm going to quickly go through that, right? So actually, yeah, I see like that. Um, um, actually, uh, we, let's say I'm say share cluster, right? And then I say three, three, okay. And then I have to sh select the share cluster. So the, the things change on the left-hand side is actually that's a namespace actually. You, it used to be is user and groups, but now I'm actually showing the namespace. If I click next, okay. So it asked me to actually, you know, you want, you, do you want to create a namespace, right? So actually I say, well, sure, I want to create a dev namespace. And then in this case, I allow the dev3 to use it, okay? So I just say next, it's very similar. I'm not going to create it again, just like the last one, but I show you the, the one actually I already pre-create in this case, right? So um, in the shared cluster, the, you see the tabs a little bit of the, Different for the exclusive one, you see the user and groups. Here, actually, as you saw the namespace, so I click the namespace. I I create a names. Okay, I create a namespace called Dev, right? And then you know the only user there is Dev three. Okay. Um. So let's switch to the Dev three. Okay. 
So this is dev three. Okay. So uh, dev three is uh, if so. Okay. So l let's show what uh, he or she can do. Right. The dev uh, three. Right. So you've actually tried to get ports. Right. Uh, within the namespace because actually he assigned to the dev. Right. So I haven't created a resource, but basically just say, hey, no resource right now, uh, because I, I actually didn't create any application, sorry, I should say. Right, so there's no pause actually create, but it, it does actually uh, show it works, right? And then uh, if I try to do the same thing like dev1 do, let me try to create a namespace, uh, dev3, right, whatever, um, <laughs> okay? So you would say you won't allow it to do it because this is multi multi tenancy environment. Uh, you cannot actually do the namespace yourself. Okay, and the of course same thing. So I want to actually quickly go through the dev four, right? And the expectation is he cannot do. He cannot even see the namespace, right? So if I do a cook on uh, get pods, right? <sighs> okay. Um, namespace uh, def, you will say no policy. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, show you uh, use Outback namespace actually create you know two type of cluster. One actually is is a cluster can use by a group of people, and then also you know the other clusters actually can support like multi tenancy. Uh, the user actually belongs to attendants. Uh, attendants cannot see the other tenants. Okay. Um. Sorry. Uh, sure, 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 sure. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you would say, okay, uh, get. You would say no pol uh, no policy, right? Because there's no policy allow you to 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 doing that. Okay. So that's the RBAC policy under the cover to right. control the The namespace. Kubernetes RBAC, I make it okay. very specific, so yeah. Great, thank you, Fred. Okay, thanks. So I'm gonna skip all the other slides, go to the summary slides. Yeah, I have a whole bunch of slides <laughs> just in case like my live table won't work. You never know the Wi-Fi. <laughs> okay. So uh, Fred did a good job to create the essentially use the multi-tenancy and uh, to create multi-tenancy with the namespace and the RBAC concept with the pure Kubernetes namespace and our uh, RBAC uh, policy, right? So there, uh, if you go to the multi-tenancy talk this afternoon, uh, there are many other things. Uh, uh, multi-tenancy seg this afternoon, there are many other things the group is talking about. Um, they're talking about DNS uh, separation, CODA separation, uh, and then there's a potential uh, of uh, the network isolation. Um, so we are working on those things, uh, and eventually we should be able to offer that level um, uh, in, uh, in the future. Uh, right, so for the reference, uh, I put, we put down the link to the RBAC, um, the, the, the product we create, uh, to, uh, so you can take a look at the product if you want to give it a shot. And then we are also hiring for VR. Um, so that's it, that's all we have. Yep. Uh, any questions? Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, mapping user role is actually depends uh, the uh, the authentication plugin, right? Depends what authentication plugin. Of course, it, in our case, we uh, we using uh, OpenStack in that particular implementation. So yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. I I correct me if I didn't actually say the, say the question already. The the question is, uh, can you actually hand the mic? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe actually, I, I I let you ask the question again. Sorry, my bad. Uh, since uh, Kubernetes doesn't come by default with um, an authentication solution, so I was right. wondering right. which one you, you used, and once you, you get the username, how you mapped the user to a specific uh, role? Yeah, uh, we, we, we actually using the OpenStack you know, authentication in this case, yes. So, yeah, 
basically we have a plugin on the yeah. back end right. so to pull the user from all the uh, back end LDAP uh, and then when we pull them in we just map them there uh, yeah. we don't do anything filtering or anything we just pull them in that's all yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we the, the bridge the plugin it doesn't really matter just we have a plugin to yeah to pull all the users. So, so if you want to go to detail, basically the the authentication plugin will will implement a few things, right? So actually, once you authenticate, you will actually put the user and role in the context. So then, actually, when you pass to the outback, outback will basically pick up the user and 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 group or whatever, right, in the context, and then you 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 do further processing. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, that, that's the limitation right now. Uh, basically, uh, again, I, I, the, the model we have is again is is have limitation, right? Uh, right now, we don't. Either you actually have to limit by namespace. There's only two models: is, is bipolar, right? Either actually you are bound by the one single namespace, or actually you will assign to a cluster to create any namespace you want. I understand, you know, sometimes you want to actually delegate to, you know, some user actually can create extra namespace. We, we kind of touch about that, like, you know, uh, we introduced the depth of a mean, right? So a person actually can have, a developer have a bit higher, you know, uh, privilege to, to doing that, but is, we are not implementing that in, in, in this release. Right, so, um, well, we, I'm, I'm talking something about future, right? So, okay, it's not that, not, we, have, we haven't implemented none of that. So, remember, Michael said it's actually it's per cluster. So, I, I, the, the, again, it's actually the authentication part is, if you look at that, very simple, right? I, well, I'm talking about the, the isolation of resource per user. I'm not even touching the network, you know, the story things, actually. Let, let, let's be honest, I'm actually not covered it. But let's say using the Outback, let's play, play with the Outback again, right? So what you need to do is actually the authentication, right? So you have to come in to some source, right? So as, let's say if you can aggregate that, right? And basically you know that the user coming in is the same user, right? So what you need to do is actually you have to push down the Outback rules to all the cluster, right? That, that's one way to do that if you're using Outback. But, you know, if you go through some other talks, there's many different ways to enforce it, yeah. Uh, if you have detailed question, I can answer it, but um, given the time, I think, it, um, I mean, we can, I can answer a question here. So um, thank you, everyone, to be here. Thank you. Okay, thanks.